Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about what is OP or what makes a weapon overpowered. We're going to talk about overpowered weapons in general, what makes them overpowered, how would you define such a thing, and what weapons in Call of Duty Ghosts are, in my humble opinion, overpowered. This is going to be a somewhat more opinionated episode of In Depth and less factual than usual, but it is what was requested of me on the last video. Most of you said Remington OP needs a nerf. We're going to talk about why won't they nerf the MTAR. We're going to talk about why won't they nerf the IEDs. A lot of different things a lot of different people believe should be nerfed or outright banned, so we're going to talk about overpowered weapons today. First off, let's talk about definitions. Overpowered, according to Merriam-Webster Online, is defined as providing more power than is needed, but that's in a more general sense. The example they used was an overpowered car. I'm going to use a more specific sense in the video gaming, and this is how I would define an overpowered weapon. And I would say an overpowered gun is almost uncounterable. It's a weapon that's good in almost every situation. may not be the best for every situation, but something that probably works in every situation is difficult to deal with and very difficult to counter. Not uncounterable, but difficult to counter. Very few things have no true counters. Classic examples of this would be the Golden Gun from GoldenEye. It's a one-shot kills. You know, you get the Golden Gun, your boss. The Energy Sword from Halo 2, before they nerfed it, was pretty insane because nobody knew you had it. You could hit Y, instantly swap it out, and then dash like 15 feet to kill somebody instantly. It was extremely dangerous. Or if you're going to go very, very old school, the BFG, which means Big Franken Gun. Uh, that was a big overpowered weapon in Doom, albeit it was single player. I'm just kind of uh, making a point here that it's usually something pretty insane. Some Call of Duty examples are One Man Army Noob Tubes. Do you remember those when Call of Duty 4? Very few people would agree or argue with me that One Man Army Noob Tubes or what were essentially infinite noob tubes in Call of Duty 4 were fair or balanced anyway because people would just constantly spam explosives. It was very bad. In MW3 we can pick on Akimbo FMG9s before they were patched. They were secondary weapons. They were machine pistols with like 40 rounds each uh, and you could run them uh, Akimbo which is how they were dangerous. Had a very fight uh, tight hip fire cone and you could spray them more effectively than any shotgun and almost all of the SMGs. It was just brutal brutal to deal with. It'd kill anything up close or if you want to go way on back in time we can talk about the M16 and COD 4. For those of you that were playing in COD 4, before they patched it the M16 was considered the overpowered gun because it killed very very quickly and it was extremely accurate. If I'm not mistaken one of the first patches Infinity Ward ever did to any of their games multiplayer wise was to fix the M16 in COD 4, they scaled back the damage and made it kick a little bit more. I hope that most of you would agree with me about these things so that now we have a sort of functional definition of what overpowered is and for me it has to be considerably powerful and now we're going to talk about some things in Call of Duty Ghosts that many players consider to be overpowered, why they're considered to be overpowered and my personal opinion on them. The first up is the Ripper, that's why I got this gameplay today, it's the DLC weapon. Many people consider the, the Ripper to be overpowered or pay to win or unfair for a variety of reasons. Uh, some of mo sometimes it's because the submachine gun is a, is a pretty decent submachine gun and it kills and a lot of people just like to blame many things on deaths. But the most common one is that it is an extremely versatile weapon because it is both a submachine gun and an assault rifle that you can swap back and forth to on the fly. And on top of that, it's very accurate for both of them. It has built-in sights, so you can do other attachments. It can just do a lot of things and fill a lot of roles that very few other weapons could ever hope to do. It's good up close, it's good medium range. It's, I'm not going to say it's really great at long ranges, but it's decent long ranges. It makes it difficult to counter. If a bunch of people on the other team are running rippers, they're prepared for almost anything, which is kind of close to our definition. However, in my personal opinion on the ripper, ripper doing stats and all, I feel like it's a bad assault rifle and an okay submachine gun. The submachine gun part of the ripper is very good up close. It does a lot of damage. It's a bullet hose. It's accurate. I like it. Submachine gun part starts to fall off, kind of about medium range. It's not really competing with the MTAR or the Vector very much. And at longer ranges, you'll have to swap to assault rifle mode. Assault rifle mode adds more uh, range to the weapon, which you think would be excellent. It would make it work, uh, you know, ideally but I find that the assault rifle shoots a little bit too slow, it has a little bit too much recoil, and it kills at five shots in long ranges instead of four. I, I typically prefer the four shot kill at long ranges with assault rifles, and it's just not that impressive of an assault rifle. Also, it has a slightly slower aim down sights time than the other submachine gun, so it's not quite as reactive. However, it is a very versatile weapon, and I do understand why some people consider it overpowered. MTAR X is also often considered a candidate for this. Some people said this should have been nerfed since the game came out. Because because it's a submachine gun that outperforms assault rifles at long ranges. It's a four-shot kill 
minimum, you'll never need more than four to kill with the Emtar X, which means at extreme ranges, I'd rather have an Emtar than, say, a Remington, which is to say something. And I can definitely understand why some people would consider this overpowered, but I consider its weakness to be the absolutely atrociously god-awful iron sights and relatively low rate of fire. It makes it difficult to use without an optical attachment, in my opinion. Of course, pros and other players have adapted to just make do, but the iron sights aren't ideal, and uh, other weapons will outperform it up close. The Bulldog is often also listed because of the sheer amount of damage and fire rate that it can pump out. It, it just pumps out crazy amounts of damage. It's pop, 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 boom, and it's just slugs or buckshot or whatever you want down range. And that one, I honestly feel... I, I might put that in the overpowered category, except it's not overly versatile. The range on it is pretty god-awful. It doesn't have good range, it doesn't go very far, but inside of a certain range, inside of a certain kill area, I don't know of anything that can counter that except for a lucky quickscope or throwing knife because it's just instant death. It doesn't really even matter how many people are standing there because you can burn the whole mag super, super, super fast. When the game first launched, I felt that IEDs were very overpowered, so did a lot of other people in the community, but they've been successively nerfed. To now, while they're considerably annoying, I don't think that they're really an overpowered or big threat. Uh, the pre-nerf MSBS is definitely something I would consider to be overpowered. It's it's totally fine now, but if you don't remember when the game came out, this was a two-shot kill at pretty good ranges. It sh bursted very, very fast, fast this assault rifle. It could usually kill you in an amount of time that was less than your total ping, so a lot of people would seem like they were melt you. You would just die before you even know what hits you. However, that doesn't happen now. It had the same kind of thing in MW3 with the Type 95. Another potential overpowered candidate is the dog in this game, the Riley or the wolf, the one that bounces around the corner and insta-kills you, the one where you hear somebody whistle and you know it's going to spawn right on top of you and you're just going to die. The one that you can't avoid, the one that as soon as it lunges at you, you die mid-lunge before it even makes contact, so you, it's difficult to knife or to survive. It can be countered with ballistic vests, so it not, it's not perfectly fitting the definition. It is counterable by ballistic vests. And I, I'm going to just go out on the tinfoil hat conspiracy theory end here. I think that there's been a silent nerf to the dog. It just doesn't seem as effective as it was before. The AI seems a little bit dumber. Uh, it seems to die quicker. It doesn't seem to get me as often. Perhaps the dog has had a silent nerf and I just don't know, or perhaps I've just gotten better at dealing with the dog, but that's probably really up there with the bulldog with me and in, in, in the overpoweredness category because of how fast it kills you and how difficult it is to counter when somebody gets in close. And another interesting candidate was the bison, the bison SMG. A lot of pros complained about that one until it got nerfed, and I did not feel that it was overpowered. It had a similar time to kill to other weapons. Hipfire was very good. However, as I was watching some people during bad lag, when the game was lagging, it made you, it was a really strong warrior weapon because of how fast it killed and because of how the headshots worked. It was kind of like the MSBS and you could theoretically kill somebody before they would ever have a chance to react, which of course would classify as overpowered, but that was under certain conditions, but these certain conditions were coming up much more than intended. But overall in Call of Duty Ghost, I feel like we've got a decent weapon balance at least. Kill streaks and perks are a totally different story. The weapons I'm pretty comfortable with, but my top tier most overpowered things in this game, the two that really concern me the most are both of, both of the dogs. I feel like the regular dog kill streak is still very, very strong, very difficult to counter, and it can be very frustrating. Also, the bulldog shotgun is extremely dangerous for a shotgun. It's better than the pump action than a lot of the other. It's the one that the pros use. That one probably less so than the dog kill streak, but inside of its certain little niche, it is absolutely brutal, and I just I just don't know how to react or deal with it. Well guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode, I explained why it seems like you die in one shot in Call of Duty Ghost, or sometimes why you do die in one shot in Call of Duty Ghost. I got your explanation there. The next episode is going to be something that you suggest to me, even if it's not a necessarily factual topic, kind of like this episode, I will offer my advice and opinion and try to help, uh, help you understand whatever it is that you're interested in with Call of Duty. As always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.